Good morning, everyone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us now at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of our freedom and of our salvation, listen to the voice of our pleading and grant that those you have redeemed by the shedding of your Son's blood may have life through you and under your protection. Rejoice forever unharmed through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul came to Antioch, he said to the synagogue, My brothers, children of Abraham, those among you who are God-fearing, to us this world, word of salvation has been sent, that the inhabitants of Jerusalem and their leaders failed to recognize him, and by condemning Jesus, they fulfilled the oracles of the prophets that are read on Sabbath after Sabbath. And even though they found no grounds for his death, sentence, they asked Pilate to have him put to death. And when they had accomplished all that was written about him, they took down him down from the tree, placed him in a tomb, but God raised him from the dead. And for many days he appeared to those who had come up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. These are now his witnesses before the God and before people. And we ourselves are proclaiming this good news to you, that what God promised our fathers has been brought to fulfillment for us, their children, by raising up Jesus, as it is written in the second psalm. You are my son this day, I have begotten you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In response to the psalm, you are my son this day, I have begotten you. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. I myself have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the decrees of the Lord. For the Lord said to me, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nation for an inheritance in the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall rule them with an iron rod, and you shall shatter them like an earthen dish. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. And now, O kings, give heed, take warning, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with respect, and rejoice before him with trembling rejoice. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? But Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good morning, everyone. As we gather this morning, 
we hear um, one of the uh, readings that's very often um, used at the funerals of our loved ones. And it speaks of the time when Jesus is talking plainly to his disciples about where he has come from and where he is going to go after his crucifixion and ascension. So one of the things we need to look at is, do we believe this? Do we have faith in Jesus' words or not? And get the comfort from this reading, and many of our loved ones who have um, suffered um, maybe a death of a loved one or a child or a spouse or uh, a family member or a parent, again, uh, know the comfort of these words, to know that there's something beyond this life and um, one that um, we have not experienced yet, so who are we to say it exists or doesn't exist? But again, we place hope in something we believe in. And knowing that Jesus came down from heaven, we do believe that. And again, that he's going to ascend to heaven, we know that. Um, then we can place our faith in something that is still cannot be proven, but at the same time, um, we still have faith and hope in his words. So again, much like we have faith and hope in a, a new marriage, we have dreams and hopes uh, there and things that have not yet proven. And again, in doing so, we um, just are hoping for the best in the sense, but in our faith, we don't just take a chance. We're not just hoping for the best. We're putting our faith in the words of Jesus, who does not lie. I came down from heaven, I'm going back to heaven, and where I am, I want you to be. Well, how do we get this thing? Thomas says, oh, good grief. There's always one in the crowd, huh? There's always one that doesn't understand. There's always one that's got a question. But anyway, it helps us because we can identify that. How do we get to heaven? Jesus says, through him. His words, his actions, his example, his service, his humility, his patience, his kindness, his forgiveness, his mercy, all of those things are ways. It's also the truth because Jesus was raised from the dead and ascended to heaven. He sits at the right hand of the Father. So it's the way and the truth and the life is ours, not only in this world, but also the next. So the way, the truth, and life, this is what Jesus says. No one comes to the Father except through him. We can't do it on our own, we can't purchase it, we can't, um, you know, say 5,000 million trillion uh, rosaries to get there. It's all God's favor, all God's gift. And all we need to do is cooperate for our own sense so that we can grow like Jesus in him, in his grace, in his pleasure with the Father, his power of the Spirit. Those are the things that make us Christian. So only through him, it all points to Jesus. Once again, so in hearing this um, this um, gospel again, we are reminded so often about the sick and the elderly, and also the dying in our in our midst today. And very often, we have come back uh, from situations where a loved one, or an aunt, an uncle, grandparent, parent, child, whatever, was anointed, and again uh, came back to life in a sense, and. Um, um, they seem to spend more time with us. And very often their phrases, um, like, you know, the bed's not made. I'm not ready, or God's not ready for me. But they have a sense that there is a place for them. And that's their faith. And maybe even a foreshadowing of what they're going to expect. So in this sickness, they have placed their faith in God. Um, yes, maybe the bed's not made and it's not our time. But it doesn't mean that we're going to be denied it, and certainly it's not really going to be something that's not going to happen. It's going to happen when we don't know, how we don't know. All we know is it will happen because it happened to Jesus. And where he is, we hope to be. Wherever he is, we hope to be. And no matter what he does, we hope to agree with him. So let us use this uh, article of our faith today to see as the gospel was spread through the early church into the Greek lands now, not just the Jewish territories, but beyond in Greece, in Antioch, um, that the success and the welcoming of the word of God by non-believers, those who are not of the Jewish faith. Um, this opens uh, again that the Jews had rejected Jesus 
And now um, there's those on the planet that still want to be open to the Word of God, let's pray for them. Let's pray for ourselves that we can have that same openness to the faith, knowing that the one that he hung on the tree um, has been raised from the dead, and where he is, we hope to be. So we bring our prayers and petition now before the Lord. We lift up our needs to our Heavenly Father, trusting that he will hear us. We pray for all those who lead in the church. May the Lord grant them strength in guiding the church toward healing and sacramental transformation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our nations, may God give them the courage and the strength in seeking justice and peace among all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those struggling with depression, anxiety, and any other mental health challenge, may God's healing hand in our prayers and our service to them bring peace and recovery. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have died. May they rest in eternal peace with all the saints and angels in heaven. We pray in a special way this morning for Clinton DePietro, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now in the silence of our hearts, let's bring our personal needs and concerns. Mighty God and Father, you know all our prayers before we even speak them. Deeper than our hearts, those unexpressed and those that have been expressed in words, we ask that you grant through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, the God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer you, which earth is given in human hands and made and become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, the God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, become for us our spiritual drink. My friends, pray that my offering and yours will become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family that under your protective care they may never lose what you have re they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal <coughs> through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just, it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and every way to give you thanks, Father, our mercies and faithful God, for you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. You always show compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. He became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. So we join all the angels and all the saints in proclaiming your glory. And without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us in this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And what is once for his disciples and now for us, he opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify the gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us now the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of his last supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from me, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Fathers, we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have now seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted down until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters, inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ, and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we too may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, his spouse, St. Thomas, the Apostles, and all the martyrs, and with all your saints. Together we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. For it is through him, with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command now, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death is by life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil, keep us faithful to your teaching and your commandments, and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who have been called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the body and blood of Christ, preserve us for everlasting life. Amen. Communion Antiphon. Christ our Lord has handed over for our transgressions and was raised up again for our justification. Alleluia. Let us pray. 
Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly into thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To you do I come before you, I stand simple and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy clemency, hear and answer me. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. Thank you for joining us this morning, and please make it a good day. God bless you.